20 bucks. 20 bucks. Down the line for 20 bucks. They keep on playing, but nobody's paying. Nor than some nickels and some dimes. Hi, everybody. It's Maggie, Mrs. Calabash, coming to my kitchen. Uh, we're recording this so that um, uh, just in case when Derek goes into hospital, we've got something to show you. Um, fingers crossed. So that's what we're going to do in the future. So we've got something in the bank, so to speak. Uh, today, I'm going to make tomato and basil tart. And I'm thinking lighter meals, summer, ha <laughs> ha. Please, warm weather. And th I like these. Um, you can make a whole tart, but um, there's only two of us, and it's not one of Derek's favourite. So I make individual tarts and freeze them. And today I'm just using the, the bought tartlets, uh, quick and easy. And you'll see on here, because Derek said, what's that big bottle? And that's raspberry vinegar. And we'll talk about raspberry vinegar later. I made that. You don't have to go out and buy it. You can make your own. So I just um, baked these uh, blind. Uh, I didn't, because the bought ones, I didn't have to put any beans in. Just blind. And as you came in, you saw me just brushing the bottoms with a little olive oil. And that stops, um, that stops the pastry going soggy. And uh, so we've brushed with some olive oil and we're going to, this is cut mozzarella. Uh, so let's just line the bases with some mozzarella. I just buy the block of mozzarella and cut my own up. Let's just hurry this job along a little bit. Uh, cut it reasonably thinly but you want to be able to taste it. There we are. Some mozzarella. And we've got tomato. This is a lovely dish when uh, the height of summer, when the tomatoes are in the garden and the basil's growing and, oh, it just reeks of summer. Oh, lovely. I'm just going to have another thing. Uh, one might be a little bit short. I think, well, there we are. That one's a little bit, what can we take? We can take, it's a bit of Robin Peter to Pate Paul. Um, tomato. Now, if you're using a, a large, um, a large uh, flan dish, then whole sliced tomatoes. But for these little ones, I just sliced up some tomatoes. And today I'm using Roma. For the simple reason, they're better for cooking. They haven't got as much juice in them. And so there's not, it doesn't make your pastry as soggy. The Reforma tomato. We always try to grow a few Roma along with, uh, with the other tomatoes. Um, I didn't have much, just, oh, I say I, that's the royal I. It's, <laughs> Derek didn't have as much success with these tomatoes <laughs> this last season. Um, I don't know why, because normally, I've got a freezer full, and uh, they're a little bit disappointing this year. Fingers this last season, fingers crossed. Now we've got, um, you know what? I didn't put any uh, uh, any uh, torn um, basil under there, so I'm going to just poke a little bit in, and and then we can. That's me trying to hurry. Now, when you're cutting, when you're doing basil, it is better if you can, if you can shred it with your fingers, because um, it it bleeds. It it doesn't like being cut, and so shred it with your fingers. At at the most, cut it with some scissors rather than try to chop it. Um, it's just one of those things with basil. Um, 
I did bring some in from the from the garden this season to try and um, keep it going. And now nah, they don't. I can't keep plants inside. And a little torn, uh, a little whole basil leaf over the top. But these are very small, so you can't. Some of these basil leaves were quite large, so I've cut them in half. And. We're going to do this with a, a cabbage, a warm cabbage and lentil salad. And we're going to serve it with some Kansas fritters. Mm, how about that? And now a little seasoning. Just a little. And this is Mrs. Calabash seasoning. So it's um, three, uh, one, of, um, one of pepper to three of salt. That's me. I missed one there, look. No, I missed two. There we are. And now we've done all that. We're just going to add a little parmesan. Some grated parmesan over the top of that. And just a sprinkling of oil. And cook these. Going to keep an eye on these uh, because they, they are smaller and they won't take as long to cook. There we are. And just a little olive oil. Keep everything nice and moist. So that's a bit like a pesto. There we are. We'll put these in the oven. These are lovely packed up for, for lunches or sitting out on the on the patio or the gazebo with a a nice glass of wine. I like a red wine with this, but I like red wine anyway. <laughs> but there again, if I've only got white, yeah, I'll put up with it. There we are. So we'll just put these in the oven. Come back with me. Right. Let's just wash. We'll leave that parmesan and the soil there. I've actually got round to making myself some dishcloths. Look, I like a nice big dishcloth and I like these because uh, it, they've got plenty of holes in and all the gunge goes through. Okay, that's the tomato and basil. Let's go back and we're going to make the um, green and cabbage uh, salad. Now for that, I just need to heat this oil a little. I've got to go back to the butcher block because I left the raspberry vinegar there. There we are. Uh, raspberry vinegar, uh, when I was growing up, we used to have this for colds because of course it's, it's, full, of, um, it's full of vitamin C. And because I'm from Yorkshire, one of the one of the ways that they gave it to you as a child was over Yorkshire pudding and it was served as a dessert. I know it sounds a bit uh, a bit strange, but uh, that's how it was. I've just heated the oil. Now in here I've got the onion and the garlic, which... Let's just put that in like that. And whilst that's cooking, um, there's a recipe here for a raspberry vinegar. And I use frozen raspberries this time of the year, fresh raspberries in season. And you just, if you're using fresh raspberries, just rinse, drain them, pat them dry. And then fill a jar with raspberries and just pour the, press it down slightly. And then just pour, I like to uh, cover with uh, white wine vinegar, but um, a cider vinegar is good, but I, I just like a white wine vinegar. And that's it. And then leave it for a week to two weeks in a dark place, and then just strain it. Um, strain it through a strainer and cheesecloth, and that's the raspberry vinegar. And so it, it doesn't cost a lot. 
and you can make either a little or a lot. Um, watch this that the garlic doesn't burn. There we are, we're just cooking that. And I've put a recipe on there for a quick sherry vinegar because sometimes sherry vinegar is asked in cooking, especially in Asian cooking, and you can actually use a sherry vinegar in this recipe. And it's just one part of sherry. I use the cooking sherry to three parts of red wine vinegar. So the raspberry vinegar is white wine, the sherry vinegar is red wine. And that's it. That's all there is to making the vinegars. I used to make them and sell them. I used to make tarragon vinegar and um, all sorts of different vinegars. Um, whoops, a little thyme. Obviously, I haven't got any fresh thyme this time, who I was going to say this time of the year, um, in this season, put it that way. So I've used, I've used dried thyme and that's, and now we're going to cook, um, that's smelling nice, shredded cabbage. I don't like cabbage shredded in the food processor, as I said before, because it, um, it, it really shreds it too much. And so we're just going to put those, let, I'm going to move it over to the back burner and just let it cook gently until the cabbage is just cooked through. And whilst that's cooking, there we are, whilst that's cooking, we're going to make the Kansas fritters. So it's back to the butcher block, back to the butcher block. Let's move those. Come on back with me. And this, uh, I love these fritters. I like fritters. So we've got cooked corn and an egg yolk in there. Cooked corn and an egg yolk. Flour. Little flour. Um, the salsa to serve it with. Some milk. Let's take the top off the milk. I've got a, a drop more milk in a jug just in case I need it. Green onions, chopped bacon. You can leave out the bacon and you can leave out the um, the cayenne pepper, but I, I do like the cayenne pepper in there. So let's just mix this, the egg, um, egg yolk and the corn together. Now let's start adding the flour. I'm going back to the stove, Derek, just to give the pan a stir. I can smell it. I have to tell him, otherwise he loses me. <laughs> he should be so lucky. <laughs> there we are. Let's just put that on there like that. And back again. The milk. Just let me see. No, uh, yeah. Now, the recipe said zucchini. I went out this morning to buy some zucchini, but the store hadn't got any in. So we're we're putting bacon in instead of zucchini today, but you can put both in. Add that, like that. And now we've got the bacon. Just stir the bacon in and the green onions. Let me just make sure they're all. If you haven't got green onions, use chives. Now, I need a good pinch of cayenne pepper. I like cayenne pepper. Stir that in. And now we're going to, um, I've got some egg white here. Let me just have a look, see. Yes, that's okay. 
I just whisked the egg white up before we started. Uh, and this is what you can use a wooden, uh, sorry, a metal spoon or I found these and they're marvellous. The children's, little children's spatulas and it's a cross between a spatula and a spoon and they're fantastic. They're just big enough. You don't want to over mix it. I'm going to put a little seasoning in that. There we are. And now we're going to cook these. So back to the stove. Let's heat this oil. And I think Derek's used all my, uh, he's taken my um, paper towel away. What? You've taken the paper towel away out of the kitchen. You used the paper towel out of the kitchen and did Oh yeah, you want it back? Yes, please. Can you get it? Is it a, is it a problem? No, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> I thought you said to take it out. No! You can't... Ah! You it's did. there. You no, did. I didn't say to take it out. You did Put your so. hearing aids in. God! Men. Men. Men, men, men. Let's have a look in here. Not quite. I'm going to turn the oven up just a little bit. Uh, ah, I've lost my timer now because I've done the oven. Oh, well, never mind. Let's just put this in. Not quite warm enough. Derek, how much more time have I got? Uh, about 12 minutes. Okay. So we're going to put, we've got some canola oil in there. I made half the recipe because I say there's only two of us. No, I won't. Um, if, I, if I put some more on there, it's going to crowd everything out and it's not going to work. So we just let that cook. And my little spatulas again. Oh no, look, I've got I've got another one. These are the little children's spatulas and they they're, they're great because they they're heat resistant. Ow. That's a little bit warm. They're not quite cooked through. We need to turn those. Let me get to it. That one's got a little bit well done. That's okay. So is that one. There we are. I'm going to add the lentils to the um, to the cabbage, and we want to warm that through. These should be cooked. I'm going to turn that heat down a little bit on there, on that one. It's a little bit hot at the back. That one wants to break up. There we are. And we've got, let's clean those bits out. Ah, they won't come. There we are little bits of corn and we've got enough just to do another couple another three the nice thing about these little spoons is you can scrape out the bowl so we're warming up the the lentils we've got some lemon juice A little lemon peel, zest of lemon, and we want a tablespoonful 
of the raspberry vinegar in there just to give it a little bit of taste, a little bit of punch. No, they're not quite ready yet. I turned it down too far. Ooh. Oh. I really screwed it on, didn't I? Uh, this is a quick way. Close your ears. It's, there we are. That's broke the seal. An old dodge. Just a tablespoonful. Look at the colour. Beautiful. Of the raspberry vinegar. And that. Get rid of that. Give it all a stir. And that is just about ready. I know these will probably be a bit overcooked now because, oh no, not too bad. It's always difficult when you're frying or sautéing. I was uh, busy making onion rings the other night and uh, Putting them in the, just getting them in the um, in the pan, and the phone went, and I thought, what do I do? Do I answer it, don't I? And in the end, of the, I I couldn't leave the onion rings. <laughs> I had to let the phone go. Mm. Oh, that is very good. It just adds a little bit of sharpness to it. Let's turn this off. You can taste the thyme. It's beautiful. I'm going back to get the seasoning, Derek. I left it because this... Turn it down. Just needs a little bit of seasoning to it. The lentils are heated through. And that... I can eat that salad cold or warm. It's one of those either or. Um, it is meant to be eaten warm, but I do like it cold. So let's have a look in the oven. The cheese has melted. Lovely. Boom. Let's turn off the oven. And have I got another 11 minutes? What? How many minutes? Uh, about six. About six minutes. <laughs> My stove says 11. <laughs> there we are. So let's put these on a plate. They're a little bit hot. I don't know if I can get them out of there. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to let those cool for a few minutes whilst I serve the, um, the lentil salad. So we serve the lentil salad. Beautiful. You see, this has got all the goodness in it. There's a little juice at the bottom. Make sure that goes in into the serving bowl because that's where a lot of the flavour is. So we have the lentil salad. We'll put a little bit of decoration on that. Take that out of the way. We have some tomato. Let's put some tomato on there. There we are. Just a little tomato, like that. Oh, it will be nice to have fresh tomatoes in the garden. Just put a few of these out to show you. If you were to move that plate from behind the flowers and everything else and put it in the middle, 
I can see what you're doing. Bloody. God, aren't they fussy, these producers? Jeez. Yeah. Do this. Do that. There, yes, sir. There. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. My old knife. <laughs> My marvellous old knife. Look, the handles are going. I don't know what I'm going to do when these... Uh, hit the road, so to speak. These are what I had when I left college, uh, when I left cooking school in 1962. So I've only got two or three left. And I love them for cooking. They were the dinner knives, actually. There we are. We won't bother with any more of those. Let's just put it over here. Is that going to fall down? I don't think so. Famous last words. We'll decorate that with a little basil. It has seen better days. I rinsed it and... Oh, there we are. A little bit of parsley for that one. And some more basil. It will be nice to be able to bring in some flowers from outside for decorating some of my edible flowers. I love nasturtiums, always grow nasturtiums. And now we've got the fritters. I just put them on. You see, there's hardly any grease come out. So let's just decorate these. We could put uh, one or two with, and these are served with a little salsa. That one's a little bit overdone. There we are. And let's put some salsa in the center there. And that is a nice summery spring summery meal it's not too heavy i like to eat something like this for lunch um it's not um it's it doesn't weigh me down for the rest of the afternoon but before i go i'd like to say thank you to kelly at hair crew i went and had a haircut this morning and she made me feel human again so Thanks, Kelly. And please go on to Mrs. Calabash Cooks on Facebook and like and share with a friend. And please email me or message me with some comments what you would like to see in the show, um, whether you like the recipes, do you want to see more vegetarian, do you want to see more Indian, more diversity? Please let me know and I'll try and put them in for you. And so thank you very much for watching. I will see you again. Please stay safe, stay well, and we'll go out with your boar on the line for 20 bucks. And I'll see you again next week.